Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we'll talk about a new feature that allows you to print custom labels from any form in Dynamics 365 for finance and supply chain management. This feature was added at version 33 and it's turned on by default, so there is no need to activate it via feature management. I think this is an amazing feature, allows you to pick any form and uh, generate a custom label or labels from the records selected in that form. So in this article, they talk about setting up custom labels for locations, customers, and items. But as I said before, you can configure it to print it for any form there is in Dynamics 365. Quite amazing. What should we do? In the first step, we will need to turn that feature under warehouse management parameters. So let's navigate there, go to reports, and make sure that under custom labels, display custom labels print button is enabled. What it will do, it will add a custom printing label under option fast tab on the form, as long as there is a label configured for that form. So now let's take, for example, a shipment form in our warehouse management module and let's configure a custom label. I'll show you how fairly easy that is. First, we will go and navigate to document routing and go to label layout data sources. This form allows you to configure data sources for different forms. In this case, you already see that I've configured for locations, products, vendors, and you can see the custom label root table that sits behind it. I'll go to the shipments and I'll copy the table name from the shipment form. Select any field, right click on it, go to the form name. Under data source, let's copy that WHS shipment table name. With that information, let's come back to our label layout data sources. Click on new, specify the name for that data source, let's say shipments. And under label layout type, we have three options. We're not gonna be doing it for the containers, neither for license plate, even though those options are available, we will do a custom label. The custom label option would allow us to add that button at any form. And under custom label root table, let's paste WHS shipment table name, and that's about it. So that's the first step. In the second step, we need to define a label layout. We will do that under label layout form. In here, we'll make sure to switch to the custom labels. You already see that I have two custom label layouts for locations and products. What I'll do here is I'll create a new one. Click on new, name it shipment labels. Under label layout data source ID, we should see the data source that we just configured, the one that is called shipments. You see this warning message, just regard it and enable label template support. Let's click on it. That would allow us to specify many more formatting options for the header and the line. Optionally select the date and time and number format. So let's say I'm gonna use English US. And in here, just save the record. That will enable that editing format here. If you have a label making software like Bartender, for example, you can generate that zebra code and just paste it in here. I don't have it, but what I have is a sample from this article right here. The sample, however, is for the locations. So what we can do though is just copy that and we can just find the places where the locations are mentioned and we're gonna replace them with a reference to the shipments. So we copy that, go back to our editing, just paste that code. I don't know the code very well here, but I can tell that in this case, this title for the location. So I'm gonna replace that name and switch it to shipment. Here I see another label for location ID. I will just replace it with shipment ID. And now the most important part here, the data placeholder actually comes between these two dollar signs. You can see that it pulls from a specific table under WMS location, location ID. We don't need that. We want to print a shipment ID here. So I will just delete that portion. And the list of fields here, I will just find my shipment. Here it is, a shipment ID. So in here, we can just click on insert at the end of the text. It adds this data placeholder at the end of our label. And we're just gonna cut it from here and paste it right there. Right, so we have a label, shipment ID, and then we have a shipment ID data placeholder. That's basically as simple as that. Of course, the possibilities of pasting a much more sophisticated zebra code with much more editing options is there. This is the most simplest example there is. So I'm just gonna save this label layout, and now we're gonna test it. What we'll do is navigate to our shipments form, all shipments, select the shipment that ends with 505, shipment ID is right here. 
and click on Options. If everything is configured properly, you will see a Custom Labels section popping up and we'll see a Print Shipments option display to us. Let's click on that. We see here that we have a label layout and because the only layout that fits the root data table is this layout, we're going to select that. And then we're going to select a printer name. In this case, this printer name could be your network printer, your local printer. For this demonstration, I'm using a Zebra printer emulator. I had to go through some additional steps to configure it first. I had to deploy the document routing agent on this machine that I'm demoing for. But these two topics are well covered. This functionality existed a while back, right? So I actually downloaded this plugin uh, for Chrome browser, ZPL printer. Here it is, right? So now let's just see how it works. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is my routing agent. Here it is. If we look at our shipments and just click on OK, we see that one label has been sent to Zebra printer. Let's just open it. And here it is. Here's the simplest possible label that we generated for a shipment that we have selected in the shipments form. It has the shipment title, it has a shipment label, and then the shipment ID USMF 000505. And there is a barcode at the end. So that's how easy it is now to create a custom label and print it for any records there is. Of course, if you want to print multiple labels, you can also do that. We can select, for example, three shipments right here, go to our options, print shipments, and use the same settings to print it there as well. Click on OK. Here's our first label for shipment 485, 486, and then 505 again. So you can select multiple records and generate multiple labels at the same time. I quite honestly love this feature. And one more additional, more advanced topic. In this article, they mentioned that you can pull data from joint tables. So let's just try to do that. What I'll do first is create a data source for a vent table, vendor table. How do we do that? Let's go back to our form. Let's go under label layout data sources. Here is my vendor data source. You can see it pulls from the vent table. But what I've done additionally here is I've joined global address book table because I want to display not only the vendor ID that is stored under vent table, but also the name of that vendor that is stored in a global address book table. The way to do that is to click on the edit query and joins. Select the table, in this case, this is a vent table, and click on add table joint. You will be presented with a very, very long list of other related tables to the vent table. And to be honest, I really don't like that experience just because they're not sorted alphabetically. I cannot filter here. You can see it shows the tables that are related in one to n fashion or n to one fashion. So basically, you have to make sure that you pick the right table for your purposes. I've already done that. And if you look at the end result, we see that we have a global address book table connected under our vent table. So here it is. That will allow me to pull information from that global address book, such as the vendor name. So with that data source configured, let's go back to our label layout and create one. Navigate to the custom labels, click on new vendors, vendor labels. In here, let's select that vendors data source, enable this label template support, select the language. I'm from Canada, so we can use the English Canada option right here, save it. Now this editing window becomes available. You can generate that label in the label making software, just paste the result in this window. I already have it here and I will just show you how I've done it. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it. You will see that there are three lines that I've added here. So the first line is for the vendor ID and it pulls from the vendor table account number, right? So I was basically able to go into this table right here. This experience is quite inefficient, right? Because I cannot filter, I cannot sort these fields. So I had to basically scroll through the long list of all the fields in the vent table, find the one that I need and insert it and then copy it in the right place. But the first line would show me the vendor account number. Here it is. The second one, I decided just to pull the party ID. This data also sits in the vent table. And for the third and final row in this label, I went to the global address book table that is related to the vent table. And I was able to select the name. 
Uh, that's the name of our vendor. And then you see the data source between the dollar signs is the third party table underscore one dot name. And that's the one that will contain the vendor name. With that in place, what we will do now is again, navigate to our vendors form. Let's select this California state tax authority vendor. The number uh, is USTX001. Under options, if everything is configured properly, we should see that custom labels section, print vendors. We will select the label layout. Again, there is only one that is applicable for that root table. So we'll, we'll use that. We'll print it to the, that Zebra printer emulator that we already saw. Here it is. Let's just click on OK and just wait. So the document routing is processing that request. And here is our vendor. So to summarize, I think this is a great feature that would allow you to generate labels from any form, eliminate development effort here, and to be much more sufficient when it comes to generating labels. That feature slipped under the radar, to be honest, but I'm glad that Microsoft added it. I, I think it has a great potential and a lot of use cases with the companies that using Dynamics 365. That is all I wanted to show to you today. I hope you found it useful. Until the next time.